everyone, and um, well, it's already time, but let's wait for another minute uh, to see if there's more people joining, and uh, we'll start the call shortly. Hello, everyone. Good morning, Michael. Hello, so um, let's start the call. Um, so first, I'd like to see um, who is joining um, the call as Chris team members. So I see Alan from Afronic, Andre from Y, Craig from Athenic, John from Aaron, um, Michael from Aaron, Nurani from Y, Paul from Y. So um, these are the people that I see um, as the Chris team members. And as usual, if there's anybody that I haven't called a name, and um, then uh, please let me know. And I noticed that uh, Loriana is uh, here with us today to um, help us uh, as the NO Secretariat. So thank you very much, Loriana. So um, Let's go through the agenda, and what I'd like to basically go uh, do today is um, confirm on the text to be incorporated. So um, if you look at the agenda number three, that's what I've listed on um, the major um, text suggestions that have been um, shared on the Christine mailing list. So um, let's go through them and see if we all feel comfortable with the suggestion. And then I'd like to also confirm that we share the same understanding about what to revert back from the text that um, Michael has shared after the last call. And then I'd also like to cover, um, to agree on a common term on a couple of things that uh, would um, help to have consistency. Um, I haven't listed the date here um, for item uh, five, but date, um, how we express date may be another thing that I uh, would like to confirm as well. And then, uh, as agenda item six, i like to confirm the timeline um, of, of our work until we submit a proposal to the ICG. So that's what I'd like to cover. And um, if there's anything, any other topic that you would like to discuss at the call today, then please raise it. Anyone has any um, additional um, agenda to discuss? So uh, um, I do notice that um, Alan has uh, raised how we would incorporate uh, the Woodcox uh, edit, and um, I was initially intending to cover in um, 3A, but uh, maybe we need more like substantial time so we can uh, we can uh, discuss it uh, sometime. Um, after we, we cover agenda item of five. So if that's good with everyone, Alan says okay, so thank you. And uh, let's uh, go into the details. So I'm um, going to actions review all minutes from the past meeting. Uh, would Loriana would be able to give us update on this? <coughs> I'll be sending Monday's uh, minutes later in the day, and I'll be sending yesterday's minutes tomorrow, okay? 
Thank you so much, Loreana. I, I know this is very intense meetings and so many, so, and I'm noted about the status. Thank you. And um, and then on um, 2B, NRO Christ, Christ team uh, website improvement. So um, our NRO secretariat has helped us um, make the update on the website um, on the part that they were able to accommodate at this stage. And the changes they made so far is um, change the um, definition of a Christ team um, mailing list, which said closed mailing list. So instead of um, saying it's closed, uh, it's re-described as read-only. And another um, one was um, the, the PDF of summary of discussions was old, so that has been updated. Um, it seems no other changes have been accommodated. And um, well, her man is not here to with us to um, uh, explain, and um, I wonder if there's anybody from NRO Secretariat who's able to give an explanation or not. If not, it's, it's uh, no worries, but um, in case you have anything to add, please feel free. I don't have anything to add at this point, I'm sorry. No, it's, it's Loriana, thank you. So, um, then let's go on to um, discuss about the text to, to be incorporated. So um, the text that we have discussed uh, to incorporate are based on the um, comments on the global mailing list, um, item 3B, C, and D. And um, I sent a, a compilation of the text um, that has been suggested and agreed, and I requested uh, for feedback um, before the call today, and I'm not seeing any further feedback, and a couple of people sent uh, um, feedback to individual threads um, that they agree with the suggested changes, and I, I see that we are in general agreement, so unless um, people have anything to raise at this stage, we can consider that the text of these are uh, three items, so 3B, 3C, 3D, to be um, agreed and fixed. Does anyone want to uh, comment on this? No? So then let's move to 3E. Um, so this is, uh, 3E is based on Alan's uh, suggestion. Um, move description of RIRs, NRO, NROEC to section one. And I think it made a lot of sense, and I saw a couple of people agreeing with it. So again, unless I hear any um, other comments um, to, to um, not to address uh, some part of it, let's uh, adopt this, this suggestion by Alan as well. not hearing anything, so oh, great, so we're, we're making great progress. And uh, 3F, um, so we come from numbering scheme. So I think um, we, we have been going back and forth about what numbering scheme we would use, well, uh, whether we use the, the um, well, I don't know the word in English, we, we say Roman uh, numbering, so it's like, uh, um, it's to be consistent with the um, ICG, or we, we use the Arabic uh, numbering scheme as um, I think this is something that has been supported by Bill Woodcock as uh, something easier for people to read. And um, I'm personally quite okay to um, change to um, the Arabic numbering scheme, um, even though it's not consistent with um, the, um, the RFP of um, the of ICG. So do people have comments about this? Um, do be, or would people be okay to change the current numbering scheme to the, the, um, the Arabic numbering scheme? I'm not sure if I'm clear on what I'm saying. So uh, by Arabic, I mean it's like this. So I see hand from Craig. Good evening and hi, everyone. Um, I think at this point in time, when we're so close to the final draft, making the change of numbering just 
for the sake of making it, um, I think it's a lot of work for not a lot of gain. Um, and it might actually create some problems for cross-referencing or whatever. Um, I think if we had started with that, it would have been good, but I think it's just too late to change something in that, that permeates over the whole document um, in the last minute, and it creates a lot of job, uh, work for Paul Michael as well. So I think he's got enough on his plate that I would rather we focus on um, you know, the bigger issues. Okay, no at all, Craig, and I see support from Andre and um, um, I don't know if John's uh, comment was uh, um, is on which theme. I think the idea uh, that was suggested was because it's not easy for the community to read um, this uh, numbering scheme that is based on the ICG, and um, it's better and easier for people to um, to uh, spot that. That's the um, that was the motivation behind it, but John is saying um, no change. So, and I see a hand from John. So, um, John, please. And yeah, so I just wanted to John. say, you know, we're so close. We've been we've used the other numbering scheme all the way through, and I just think it it would make it look weird to change it now to everybody that's been following it and reviewing it and cross referencing it, and they have notes and everything on sections. So, I I would say no change. Thank you, John. Noted. And um, Andrew? Yeah, well, basically what John said, I mean, I, I think the, the, the community has already, I mean, the bulk of the reading has been done already, so everyone is used to this scheme. Uh, I'm personally not happy with this scheme. I think it's weird, but um, at the end of the day, it's, uh, I think it's short lived document, so let it be. Noted, um, uh, Andre. Um, so I think. Um, so we can uh, um, um, explain like this. The, the, um, the reason for this suggestion to put back to a numbering scheme is um, the, uh, the, the Arabic numbering scheme is uh, make it easier for the community. But in fact, we, we feel it may confuse the community if we change back to, the, um, uh, to another numbering scheme again. Uh, again. So we, we think it's better to uh, keep the numbering scheme that we have been using. So I think we, there is consensus on this. So um, if no other comments, um, I, uh, I see uh, Paul is agreeing with John on this. Um, so thank you, Paul, for expressing this. And uh, let's go to 3G. So um, I think this is related to um, um, Andre's suggestion. Andre, is there anything you would like to add um, for your suggestion? I'm just uh, trying to pull the, the actual suggestion. <laughs> there were so many suggestions flying around. So, um, you're referring to this uh, NTIA as the oversight? The, the last minute one. Right. The last yeah. minute one. Um, well, if there are any questions, I'm happy to answer them. But I think uh, my comment was self uh, self explanatory. I can just repeat it. Um, I think that's exactly the thing that we're changing. I think that's substantive and incorrect, in fact. Because NTA through the contract, through the Iona Functions contract, actually performs the oversight role. And I think that's what we are uh, taking from the NTIA and uh, uh, substituting with uh, the ARIAS contract with Iona Functions operator. Thank you, Andre. And I think it's a, it's a very important point that uh, we, we actually properly explain this. So um, I have expressed my support, and I see a couple of other Chris team members agreeing with this uh, suggestion. So if um, no other comments, then um, let's uh, go with uh, this suggestion from Andre. Thank you, um, Alan and uh, Andres. For supporting, um, I see support from Paul as well. So then, um, H, this is another suggestion from um, Andre, and it's basically on um, suggesting to move this uh, one paragraph that was in um, um, 3A into um, 3A3 under SLA because it fits in better with the context and. Um, like, again, it, it made sense, and I think all the people who have like, expressed support here um, have uh, expressed support for Andre's uh, 
changes. So unless all, um, any all other comments related to this, then let's also incorporate this into our draft. Yeah, I'm not seeing any comments, so um, let's go to 3i. I did, oh my, oh, I forgot what this was about. Hmm. <laughs> Does anyone recognize what this was about just in this? Uh, somebody must have proposed Kizumi, uh, Well, I'm looking at this section, and there were a few changes that um, I suggested. Well, uh, through the edit, uh, the reference to the AIANA.org domain disappeared from one AD, and then the administration of the special purpose I, oh, yeah, I, yeah. Know, ARPA also disappeared. So what I suggested that we uh, kind of reinstate those statements in this section. Thank you, thank you, thank you for this refreshment. Yes, that that is in fact the reason why I listed uh, I, um, 1D, and um, and I felt that that was a reasonable change. And I think um, Alan has expressed support for this. So um, unless anybody else have any comments on this, again, um, I thank you, Paul, for expressing support. Oh, thank, oh, oh, you did express support on the list as well. Uh, sorry. Um, so good to know that. And uh, John is expressing support as well. Mulani, great. So we're seeing uh, many supports. So let's incorporate three I. So on the uh, Andre, uh, the part that Andre has suggested to incorporate on our uh, one D. And then, so let's move to on three J. Uh, six. I think this is quite a straightforward one. Um, to have the description of APNIC regional process to be consistent with others, so remove the names of Chris team members. And um, so I'm not here. I haven't heard anything from Dr. Govin, but um, if we don't hear from him until the end of this call, then we can incorporate the changes that has been suggested by Mwandua. So thank you, Mwandua, for suggesting this change. So I think we've covered um, all the major points of the suggested uh, text. And um, then let me uh, move on to confirm on what to revert back. So um, <coughs> I think there has been an agreement on um, three points to revert back. And um, that is first section 3A2. Um, that is the part that uh, mentions the IPR. And uh, Paul Wilson's text suggested to change on um, what it says RIL communities into internet communities. Um, but um, people felt that it's better to put it back to um, RIR communities. So I think um, we should uh, revert this part back. And then um, another part is um, there's a part on, um, well, I can't remember the exact section, but um, where Paul Wilson has mentioned the IANA. He, he, he actually deleted the original text of the IANA operator, and then he just did, um, uh, shortened this to the IANA. But um, <laughs> well, um, there was disagreement on this. We should uh, make it clear that it's the operator that we're referring to. It's different from the IANA. Um, it, it can mean uh, wider things. So we, we actually uh, revert this part back as well. And then um, another one is, I think we already covered, um, that we actually restore um, some of the parts that has been deleted um, in 1C, or I can't remember the, the exact section, but then we will reflect that in one, uh, 1D. We already covered this as a part of um, Andre's comment. So um, since we agreed, um, not to revert back as long as there's a single disagreement to incorporate a post or suggestion. So um, these are three, three points. 
uh, agreed um, to revert back. So, um, Alan, um, oh no, sorry. Uh, I have to go back to a little bit. Oh, so Alan was saying that RIR community, not RIR communities. And uh, singular, not plural. So I see a hand from Andre and Alan. So first go to Alan. Uh, I, I think Andre was before me, but uh, I, I want to speak about the IANA number services operator. I, I think there are at least three different senses in which we talk about the IANA. Uh, sometimes we talk about the just the IANA, and we mean a, a concept rather than an organization. Um, Sometimes we say the IANA operator and we mean the organization which is providing all of the IANA functions. And sometimes we say the IANA number services operator and that's when we mean the, the operator that provides the functions that are useful to the RIRs. So I don't think we can make any blanket changes. Uh, we need to consider each use and decide which of those three senses should be uh, should be mentioned. Noted and good point. And um, Andre, I'm sorry, I I, uh, I skipped you um, and uh, didn't follow the order. So Andre, please. no problem. Actually, Alan said most of what I wanted to say. Uh, uh, so in my view, I suggested to distinguish indeed for the two um, letter points that Alan mentioned to distinguish between IANA functions operator when we talk about the whole. Um, IANA uh, uh, functions to be consistent with the uh, ICG RFP. And then when it comes to specific services provided to the area community, we call this, as Paul Wilson, I think, suggested, um, uh, we call it um, IANA uh, number services operator or something like this. So I suggested, I actually went through the text and suggested this edit in the, uh, uh, using Microsoft Word tracking. Thank you, Andre. Yes, I recall you actually made a suggestion, uh, especially on, um, I think, section uh, 3A. Um, so um, we should go through this. So, um, and then we, we want to um, agree on what term we will use per um, each of these um, elements. So um, what, we w what word we will use when we refer to wider um, the I wider IANA function, um, including all all the elements, all the all three functions, um, including particle parameters and names, and um, what word we will use when we uh, refer just purely on the numbers, and what word we will use when we refer to more of general, much wider IANA, as in like um, maybe. Um, Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not sure if there's much wider IANA actually, but maybe such as like the IANA department, for example. Um, we, we may want to distinguish those. And um, so um, on on the part that um, on that focuses just on the number side on the IANA. Well, I actually wanted to go through this as a part of a common term. So um, if everybody's okay with this, let's move to, um, I, th I think we've covered on what to revert back on um, agenda item four. So, um, and since we already started a part of the discussions for five, um, let's first cover um, 5B instead of 5A, since we already started. And um, Alan, sorry. Um, So I see Alan has put your hand up in agenda item three. So I see Nirani's hand, but let's go to Alan and then um, and then on, on to Nirani. So Alan, please. 
Um, so under three, I wanted to raise a new issue which is not on this agenda, but which we have discussed on the mailing list. Um, but I'd suggest to go to Nurani now. Let's finish discussing number four before we go to that point. Noted. Um, so, Nurani, please. Uh, thank you. Well, I brought up one point that I believe got some support, uh, and it was, I believe, 2B2, where the original text said that a decision by the NTIA to discontinue its stewardship would not have any significant impact on the continuity of et cetera, et cetera, uh, internet number related services, et cetera while pull changes to would have no impact, and I suggested reverting back to the would not have any significant impact. Noted. Um, so instead of no impact, um, I'll say no significant impact. So add the word impact. Um, noted. And um, um, so, sorry, I think I, I wasn't clear if this was the idea to revert back or whether this was a new suggestion. So um, I do remember this suggestion um, being posted and um, let's uh, incorporate this as well. So thank you very much, Nuan, for uh, raising this and clarifying. So I see um, Andre agreeing with Nuan, um, Alan as well. And so it wasn't a new suggestion, it was the original text, so we're reverting back. Yes, noted. Um, thank you for clarifying that, Nurani. Um, so, um, so let's go to Alan. Okay, thank you. Um, so back to agenda item three, text to be incorporated. Uh, there's an item which is not listed here, and that was um, I sent email saying that in section 4A, uh, the text which says there will be no changes to uh, service levels or reporting. Um, I think that's incorrect and we should change it to uh, no significant changes. And I think there was some support on the mailing list, but I'd like to confirm that during this call as well. Thank you, Alan. I do uh, recall um, support being expressed. Um, so, um, and yes, I think, uh, Nirani, I, I recall you supported this. And I, I think I also supported your uh, suggested change. Um, so if, and I think he, he, what you mentioned made a lot of sense. Because, and I, I also recall a couple of other people um, expressing this. I, the, the reason that you, uh, you offered was well, we can't say that there's no um, impact because uh, actually in terms of um, service level or its review, because we do actually uh, propose to change the contract um, from NTIA to, um, to RIR, which actually changes the scheme of review. So I think it's, it's, um, we should actually incorporate this unless anybody has um, any other comments related to Alan's point. Oh, please. Uh, thank you, Izumi. Um, I did support Alan's text earlier on. I, I, I think in this context, it makes a lot of sense. I just want to make sure that we're all very aware that we, we want to be very careful um, not to be, I, I, I just hope that this, this, this doesn't send off any alarm bells because I think that, you know, uh, we probably want to keep as much continuity as we can uh, going through the process, and we're not expecting any surprises or any new structures or any kind of new developments that would come in. I think that would surprise the NTIA very much. Um, so, and, I, and I'm comfortable with this because when I read this, I did have this in mind when I read Alan's proposal this morning, and I could see that, yes, there would be these, these, these operational, uh, small operational changes that would come in. Just, so to say no impact, I think it would be a bit heavy, but I just want to be careful that we're not overemphasizing this for those for those reasons. Thank you. Thank you, Paul, for clarifying this, and I agree with your observation as well. And I I, I do note that you agree with Alan's suggestion, um, and I think all saying no significant seems to be a good balance that addresses the 
this um, holds some um, um, concern as well. So um, I see a comment posted from Rani. There are no changes to existing service levels or reporting that are being proposed, only a change in contracting party to align with the delegate, uh, delegated policy authority. So, um, Nirani, so you're suggesting uh, to, to change text according to this? Uh, no, that was the, the the text proposed by Alan. So I just, it was just in a response in response to Paul's uh, concern. I share his concern, but I think that the way Alan has worded it is pretty clear to me. Oh, thank you. Um, I think this is the yeah. I think this is the existing text. Um, so Alan's suggestion is um, it has a no. Uh, is it uh, no changes? <laughs> it says there are no significant changes. So add the word signi no um, significant um, after the changes. I think that was um, Alan's suggestion. So maybe I can copy paste and. Um... Sorry. Sorry for that added confusion. No, of course. <laughs> <laughs> no significant yeah. changes instead of no changes. Yeah, yeah. Too fast there. But um, in any case, I'm, I'm happy with Alan's uh, proposal. Okay, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you. So I, I somehow am not able to copy and paste, but I, I think it's clear to people. Then um, I think we um, we we have an agreement to incorporate um, Alan's text. So thank you, Alan, for raising this. And um, so after we we go on up to agenda five, I did send out uh, a compilation of the changes that have been um, suggested, which I may not have listed all of them um, on this agenda, the draft agenda, um, which I, I may not have captured by then. So let's just uh, confirm them after this, just to make sure we haven't missed anything. So um, are we all good with agenda item three and four? So I'm not um, seeing any further comments. So um, let's go to agenda item five. So. Um, Oh, thank you. Um, I think this is exactly the the, the thing that I, I sent out to the, um, the Christine mailing list, and it may be better if we we look at this because um, this also covers the on uh, using a common term. Um, so it actually covers agenda item number five. So um, let's go down. Um, I wonder it shows the um all, all the text that I've sent. I thought I listed um the common um the common term uh, as well, which somehow doesn't seem to uh, show on this uh, this um screen. Oh oh, thank you thank you. So want to revert back and um so if you go down a little bit on the part that says consistency, I should have numbered them actually. Sorry, Paul, not easy to find. So um, it's uh, close to the bottom. There's a title that says um, consistency. And so let's go through them. So um, first, um, internet number community. Um, I 
So I think it was Nirani's suggestion to use this uh, uh, same word when we refer to um, to our community. And um, are we all good with using this word? I'm not seeing any comments on the chat, so um, I think um, we we can actually uh, uh, reflect this in our document. And I I want to double check with Michael if sorry Izumi, sorry to interrupt, but there've been several hands up on the chat. I think you're not seeing them. Um, I put a hand up, and so did Nurani. Oh, thank you. Um, Alan, um, I think I see you first on the list. Thank you for pointing out. And Alan, please. Okay. Um, so I, I'm not sure about saying internet number community. I'd be happier to say RIR community when we're, um, but singular, not, not communities as if they're multiple communities, but just one RIR community. That's my preference. Noted. And Nurani? Uh, well, two comments. Uh, one about the singular and, and, uh, and the uh, plural. Um, I, again, I think that they're, they're separate things. I think sometimes we talk about the various RIR communities, the work that has been done in the various RIR communities, but I agree that when we speak about the global community, we should talk about it in singular. We should not say that the RIR communities uh, think so and so. Um, the other thing is, is uh, regarding the internet numbers community, and apologies for confusing things by leaving that out in the title, was um, I'm, I'm quite comfortable to, in, to totally change internet numbers community to RIR community. Uh, but I do think in that case we need to uh, explain that. Again, uh, in some cases we are talking about the numbers community as opposed to, to the protocol or the name. Um, so I'm not sure if we can replace internet numbers community with RIR community blank. We might have to uh, have a look at that. Um, specifically, but where we use, if we choose to use numbers community, we should use it consistently, internet numbers community, not internet number resource community or number resource community or number community. So that was the list I was trying to, um, to include there in my mail to make sure that we use whatever term we, we decide on consistently. Thanks. Um, thank you, Nurani, and I, I see a comment um, from Paul uh, on this chat, let's use ICG's term, and I, there seems to be general agreement, oh, let's be consistent. And um, so I think the remaining um, issue to be discussed is um, whether we would replace um, internet number community with, um, with RIR community. And um, I think we need to check with the context if it's really okay to um, replace with the RIR community, because as Nurani has pointed out, um, there may be a case that we have ex uh, used this word to ex explicitly differentiate ourselves from the other um, uh, IANA functions community. So um, it may be safe to um, leave um, to internet number community um, rather than try to replace uh, with RIR community. It's, yeah, thank you, Michael. So um, to, um, I think that makes it clear. So it's based on the original current text. Um, so um, I hope that clarifies things for Alan. And Alan, do you have any additional or feedback related to this? Thanks, Izumi. Um, 
Yeah, I'm not sure if, if I'm clear about what decision we're making here. I think it depends on context. So sometimes we should be saying internet number community or numbers community. Not sure which, whatever the ICG uses. Um, and sometimes I think we want to say RIR community, depending on context. And occasionally we might also want to use plural RIR communities if we want to emphasize that uh, each of the five RIRs does things in their own slightly different way. Uh, so I don't think we can do a global search and replace. Someone will have to look at all of these and make a decision case by case. Um, Alan, I, I do have a comment related to that, but I see Nirani's hand, um, so please, Nirani. Thank you. Well, first of all, uh, well, <coughs> uh, and Michael and Paul, that it's context-based. Uh, RAR community, RAR community, and internet numbers uh, community. Uh, and where we use the numbers, let's make sure that we consistent. Uh, just one quick uh, point, since we will be using uh, Internet Numbers Community and RIR, we might want to put in a, an explanation somewhere uh, for all of us who are involved in the RIR community, this goes without saying, but, but we might want to put something in about the Internet Numbers Community uh, represented by the RIR community. So, or, that's bad wording, but something like that to make the connection so the uh, the reader of the document understands that we're not talking about different communities here. Um, so what do others feel about Nirani's suggestion? Maybe it's, it's good. I, I, I personally think it's a good idea to make sure that um, we won't confuse people um, and um, give people impression that we're talking about different communities. So um, I see a comment from Bill, don't confuse people, use one uniform term, and um, so um, one uniform term. So the, currently the documents um, uses um, RIR community and internet number community or some words that represent this. And I think the reason for this is that we need to sometimes express them differently. Um, so when we uh, talk about our community is in the RIL community, we say RIL community. And then when we want to um, distinguish ourselves from um, other two communities of the INR function, then uh, we, we use um, internet number community. So, um, and then we're basically, um, uh, suggesting to use this term internet number community uh, based on the existing text. Uh, if there's the existing text uh, uses some language that um, is indicating um, similar to internet number community, then the suggestion is to use the term internet number community. So um, is this uh, a good direction to move forward for everybody? And I'll, I'll confirm about numbers community or number community uh, as a second step. But um, I'd like to confirm first um, that whether we're good with this direction. So in, in the part where in the existing text refers to internet number community or use language that's similar to this, then we use a common term internet number or numbers community. Is that good? I'm not seeing any um, comments. Oh no, I'm, I'm seeing a hand up from Paul. Hi there, Izumi. Like, uh, I'm happy with the direction everyone's going here. I'm, I'm kind of 
being quiet because I really am interested to hear what everybody else has to say here. But um, I think in the end, we all understand what RAR community is. And if we're going to refer to RAR community, that's fine. If we're also using it interchangeably sometimes with internet numbering community, that's also good. I think we just must define this once because of the audience that we're going to be uh, speaking to. If we were sending this to our RIR community or community to the RIR community, then it would make sense. But this is going to be ICG, and you have a lot of people that are not familiar with the word RIR community. I know that from following the deliberations at the ICG, um, and I, I believe some of you have also followed this, I have heard the word Internet Number Community come up, and that's very clear to them what that is. So if we're going to interchange Internet Number Community and RER Community, there needs to be a definition in the front that states this, then we can use this, and it will be clear to the audience. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. I think what you said makes a lot of sense, and I'll go to you, Thank you. I'll keep my comments short. Well, thank you, Paul and Alan. That was what I was trying to say. There are some people who understand the Internet Numbers community. We use RIR community everywhere else. So I don't think we can only adopt one term, but let's define it so it's clear. Uh, and then we, we choose uh, what's appropriate in the context. And I, having read the document, I feel that most of the time uh, we use use it appropriately. So I don't think we have to go back and do lots of replaces. Uh, we don't we have to go back and replace lots of terms. We just have to make sure that we use it consistently. Internet numbers community and RIR community. Thank you. Thank you, Nurani. Um, so we actually, um, the, the current uh, suggestion on the table is, um, so where RIR community is referred to, we make sure that we actually mean internet number community. Um, but um, once we clarify that, uh, we, we may use the word RIR community within our proposal. Um, so that's the proposal on the table at, um, at this stage. Um, Yes, I'll trust the person with the pen on this, I think. Um, and then I see our uh, John support for this. Yeah, I think I'm happy with this. So if everybody is happy to um, leave it to um, Michael, then um, I think we can we can say that we, we just um, we, we leave this part for to Michael. Is that okay with you, Michael? Michael and Bill. So, um, so Alan is saying that we, we leave it to Michael and Bill. Okay. So um, we let's do this. And so I think we we've covered um internet number community part. And then on um, on the IANA function, um, we distinguish IANA function operator and um, IANA numbering service operator. I think these are the distinctions that we we need to make. And um, is everybody um, happy with this distinction and the, and the word that is being suggested here? Alan has expressed that he supported on the mailing list. Yes, I think it was indeed your your uh, suggestion, maybe. Um, yep, support. So I think we can now move to another part. Um, I think there was a, a comment about how we express date. Um, there seems to be two different um, suggestions. I can't remember exactly what they were, but um, I don't have a strong preference as long as we're, we're consistent. So um, unless anybody has issues with the current draft and feel that we have to change,
Yeah, I think we can leave this again to um to whoever has the pen to to um to ensure consistency is fine. Yeah, so I think everybody is saying that um, consistency is what matters, and um, it, yeah, we we don't have to agree on a particular format. So I think we've covered this. Yes, so we, we leave it, uh, to be clear, yes, um, we leave it to the person with the pen, but make sure this person with the pen, um, it makes the um, expression consistent. So if we're good with this, then um, let's, uh, thank you, Michael, for saying that um, you will be, uh, make sure, you will make sure you will ensure consistency on this. Thank you. So let's move to singular plural. So um, whether we use RIR community or RIR communities, internet number community or internet numbers community, and I, I'm already sensing a general direction. People tend to prefer internet RIR community unless there's explicit case where we have to, we want to explain about five different RIRs, and then. Um, I think internet number community is uh, consistent with um, ICG's term. Um, it's a, if, I think that's what uh, Paul has mentioned. If that is the case, we want to make it consistent with ICG's term. Oh yes, Bill. So um, the, the point we're covering is singular or plural. That's the part that we're covering. So does anybody have any um, comments about my observation? So to repeat, um, we use RIR community, the singular, unless there is an explicit case where we want to distinguish five RIR communities. That's one point. And then um, we use internet number community because that is the word consistent with ICG's word. Oh, thank you, Bill, for clarifying your comment. Yes, I agree with you, Bill. So I think um, I hope that my suggestion is consistent with what you're saying. And um, so basically go with um, singular. So thank you. And I'm seeing a couple of support to Bill's uh, comments. So I think we agree on, on this. So basically go, to, go, go with singular. So I think we've covered the part about um, in, um, um, making sure our language is consistent. So um, I'd like to quickly go through this list um, to make sure that we've covered all points um, that, um, that has been listed, um, um, that has been raised to, to change the edit uh, on the Christine mailing list. So at one point, I wanted to confirm with you, Alan, was 1B, um, description of the customer. Um, you, I recall you mentioned we, are, we actually say not-for-profit membership-based organization as description of RIR, but you seem to have said that um, this will be replaced by Andre's text, which in my understanding seems to be uh, 2B3, which is a different section. So um, may I clarify? Um, whether your observation is um, is um, is the case, and we can just uh, not uh, consider your your suggestion to use this word, not for profit membership based organization. Um, Izumi, I don't know what text from Andre you're talking about. Um, my suggestion, well, was to to take the description we said a not for profit membership based organization and to move it from some other section into one b so that was my suggestion or maybe there was a change from uh, association to organization. I think we've settled on the word organization now, so we'll say that r i r s are not for profit membership based organizations, and my suggestion is that that should go into section one b. Um, instead of as a sort of a parenthetical remark in some other section. 
So I'm not sure what text from Andre you're proposing to replace it with. No, um, it wasn't my uh, proposal. It was um, you, you seem to, in my understanding, you seem to have mentioned that yourself. That's why I was uh, I wanted to double check. And if that that was not the case, it, it's fine. And um, I agree with your suggestion to incorporate this uh, word in one B. So um, I'm actually happy with this. I just simply wanted to uh, double check. So and then I'm um, I think um, I've missed. Um, hand from John. So, um, John, please. Yeah, <clears throat> I assume I just wanted to make sure Bill sent an email uh, earlier this morning, not too long ago, uh, with with uh, several points. Well, not several, but a few points he really needs clarification on. I think we should make sure to cover that before we get off the call. I just wanted to, to point that out. Uh, maybe we can give, uh, maybe Bill can take over and, and just ask those questions. Uh, to get the answers that he needs to to do his edits. Thank you, John. Excellent um, point to raise. So um, I agree. And so after we go through this, uh, let's give um, time to uh, Bill, and he, he can uh, share the part that he wants to clarify. And I see Alan's uh, hand up as well. Um, I think. He said, regarding definitions, go. Right, thanks, Izumi. Um, we've been talking about placing a section of definitions somewhere. And so if we're going to do that, we need to decide where to put it. Uh, one option is to invent a new section somewhere near the beginning. Um, and another option is to put them in 1B, which is a description of the customers. Uh, my suggestion is to to start section 1B with some definitions. So, so the heading for 1B says a description of the customers of the service or activity. My suggestion is to start that with, with some definitions. An RIR is a this, this, this. The NROEC is such and such. The NRO is such and such. Put all the definitions there. And then we go on to say the RIRs manage the registration and whatever it is they do. So that, that's my suggestion. I just like clarity of uh, you know, where are we going to do it. We're going to have to give our document editor some instructions about where to place the definitions. Thank you, Alan. I think that's a good suggestion. I agree with that. And I see um, Bill agreeing with your suggestion as well. So um, unless there's any other um, comments related to this, let's incorporate this. So um, then, um, let, I'm not hearing from anybody, so I think there's an agreement uh, to Alan's suggestion. And uh, let me go back to this uh, list uh, um, and uh, quickly go through. And then after we, we're done with this list, uh, let's go to Bill. Um, so it, we, it seems we will be running over time, but I feel it's important we cover. This. So on um, those first members who can stay, um, uh, please continue to stay um, after um, after UTC 14 um, as well. So um, so we've covered 1B, and then um, 1B1 um, instead of would not have significant impact, or simply say no impact. I think that's a suggestion that well. Way by Andre and maybe by some other people as well. Um, and um, 2B31, I think we've covered this in our agenda already. This was suggested by Andre and we have agreed to incorporate. Uh, 3A, this was again suggested by um, Andre. Um, and I think this part, um, he was uh, trying to clarify. We, we are um, talking about. The number, um, um, the number resource uh, part of the function of the IANA, not the wider um, IANA function. This makes sense. A couple of people express support, and um, so if no other comments related to this, um, um, I'd like to suggest to incorporate.
Okay, um, thank you, Alan, for expressing support, Nirwani as well, um, all as well. So, um, so that's covered, and um, I think the last point that we just need to cover is um, it is the um, 3A2. It is the preference of the RIL community that all relevant parties acknowledge. Oh, sorry, I I, I, I didn't delete at least acknowledges um acknowledges. Oh, sorry, I think. Because we don't worry about the specific wording. Okay. Just make sure that people are clear on the sense. Okay, so I think the general um is um saying that um. All these people agree, and it is the expectation rather than just to state it as fact. I think that's the point. So agrees to these expectations. Thank you, Alan, for clarifying. So, um, yes, so change facts from expectations. Oh, so I see Nirani's comment. This was in response to Paul Wilson's comment about paragraph not being clear. Um, e, uh, um, I think this was another sentence um, that we're talking about, Paul Wilson's uh, response about the paragraph not being clear. No, no, yeah, you're, you're right, Nirani. Yes, it's, it's true. It's in response to Paul Wilson's uh, comment. And I see um, Craig is supporting this, um, and a couple of people supporting this. And um, yes, I think uh, so we're done with this. And then, so let's go to um, 3A3. Um, service level agreement um, with the INA num <coughs> numbering service. So oh, I think I'm, I'm maybe repeating myself. Um, so we covered the part that has been um, suggested by Paul and edited by um, Alan. And um, I'm not sure. I, I'm, the the part that I'm seeing is um the last part that I'm seeing is four a. Um, we change from no change to no significant change. Um, which is the part we actually discussed um already, and uh, Paul has um actually oh. <coughs> Explicitly made clear that um, he doesn't. Um, he uh, he agrees with adding this significant. While we want to be careful um, that um, we're not overemphasizing this uh, big change. And I see Alan um, um, supporting Andrew's suggestion regarding SLA. So I think these are the points that I've captured um, from the mailing list that I, I think we, we need to confirm. And um, um, if there is any other um, points that you would like to raise, um, please raise it. But um, and Bill, uh, I have you. So um, except for Bill, if there, there is anybody um, who has actually uh, shared your suggestion, but it was not uh, listed here. Please, uh, please raise it here. So um, I'm not seeing any hand. So let's go to Bill. Okay, uh, I'll run through these in the same order that I sent them to the list. Um, so, uh, and I don't need answers right now. What I need, I'm going to need to take two hours to get my kids fed and to school before 9 a.m. my time, I'm going to be able to start back in on this. 
Um, so if you want me to do the final copy edit, these are things I'd like to have answers to by then. So first thing is um, RAR community or uh, internet number community. Um, second thing is uh, the numbering services language. It sounds like numbering services everybody's good with now, uh, but you know, if, if not, let me know. Um, the numbering, uh, do we go with the, uh, the wacky numbering or integer numbering? Um, hang on a sec, let me. Uh, okay. Um, thanks, Bill. Um, so, so before I start, I want to say that I thought Bill did a really good job of editing the document. Um, he's cleaned up a lot of the formatting. He's made some wording changes that I mostly agree with. Um, I did have a few points of disagreement or, or questions which I raised in email yesterday, I think. Um, but most of those were not really related to Bill's changes per se. They were rather related to changes that other people had suggested that had been incorporated, I think mostly from Paul Wilson. And we've already discussed all that. So what I would like to see is a new document that includes the text we've been discussing over the past day and Bill's copy edits. And so to get that done, we need to answer Bill's questions. So um, I didn't really have my hand up to Speak. I, I mostly want, Bill, if you're leading this part of the discussion, um, instead of listing all the topics, could I ask you to take them one by one, um, raise a topic, then let us make a quick decision uh, or come to a quick decision that we need more time and then move on to the next topic. That, okay. That's my suggestion. Narani, go ahead. Thank you, and I um, I think that makes sense. And I see a hand from Nirani. So, um, Nirani, did you want to speak? Thank you, Zumi. Um, two things. I'm I'm happy with uh, going through them and clarifying them again, so everyone's clear. Uh, but I have two requests uh, that uh, we are very clear about who's holding the pen. Uh, so that we know um, know that that whoever is holding the pen makes the last edit is on the next call, just so that that person can answer and clarify uh, any questions about what has been changed, and not uh, possibly even chair it like we did last time. I think that worked really well with Michael going through uh, explaining what he's done and not um, whether it's. It's Bill or Michael, I have no real opinion. Uh, I think both of you are competent and, and uh, good writers. I'm quite comfortable with, with either. But it, of course, it needs to be someone who can commit the time, who can answer the questions, and who can then be on the next call. Thank you. Thank you, Nurani. Um, so before we go to um, um, discuss uh, each of those uh, questions, uh, let's uh, clarify this point. So uh, we want to have a single pen. I think that the system has worked very well. So um, let me confirm um, with um, Bill and Michael which works better for you, um, whether you have any preference. Um, it may be difficult for you to say. Um, so. Um, well, from my perspective, it, it seems to, um, I, uh, well, maybe we can discuss this uh, when we confirm about the timeline. That might be better. And then um, 
uh, we can um, confirm what would be most efficient um, uh, based on the timeline and uh, on what timing that we reflect the edits from Bill. So is that okay, Nurani, that we cover later uh, along with the timeline? Okay. And uh, uh, Michael has um, clarified that he can work either way. Um, sure, thank you. So um, um, Bill, um, please, um, would you um, let, let, let's go through um, each of your points. Um, and um, I recall the first point that you raised was whether we will um, change RIR community into internet number community. Is that right? Yeah. And uh, I, in my email, I said I strongly recommended against changing it, but you know, really, I, I I don't care very much one way or the other. What I care about is consistency. So, if we define a term up at the top, I I don't care which term it is, as long as it can be used consistently throughout. So, um, Internet Number Community or uh, RIR Community. People have preference. I, I don't want to use things interchangeably. I don't want to confuse people. I want to have a single term. If they mean, if we're saying different things, I'd like it to be because we're meaning different things. Sorry, that was in response to Alan saying, put both in, mention that they can be used interchangeably. Anybody? Izumi, go ahead. Um, thank you, Bill. So um, I, I think w I agree with you that we, we should use this, um, the consistent term. So unless there's a part that we should explicitly say RIL community for a clear reason, uh, maybe explaining about um, I don't know our process and it doesn't work to just use the word internet number community. Then maybe we can um, use our community, but to make it clear that we, we mean the um, the internet number community. But um, unless there is very clear reason and need, I think we should um, stick to um, internet number community. That, that's my Good. suggestion. Okay, uh, excellent. So moving on. Um, <clears throat> the numbering services language, uh, uh, that was, um, it, it seems like everybody's okay with that. It's not controversial anymore. Uh, sorry, Bill, could you expand on that? Uh, so Paul Wilson um, introduced this uh, numbering services phrase uh, in capitals, uh, which largely replaced the word functions. So IANA numbering services, um, uh, you know, consumers of numbering services, uh, <clears throat> numbering services themselves, so forth. Um, it, as I said, it's, it's not a change that would have occurred to me, and it seemed like a very fundamental change, the downside to it, in my opinion, is that the phrase IANA functions and IANA functions contract is a well-known term of art within the community already. So replacing that with a neologism is has its dangers. On the other hand, if we uh, define it up at the top, and use it consistently, it has the advantage of being clear and brief, and we can still use the phrase IANA functions contract when we are discussing the IANA functions contract. So it, it seems like everybody's good with that now, not controversial anymore, or not? Okay, Alan just said IANA functions operator 
uh, in the generic and IANA number services operator when it's specific to numbers. Uh, that seems like <coughs> good. Okay, good. Um, and it sounds like there was also a consensus for wacky numbers for numbering of paragraphs. Okay. Um, let me skip ahead to the next email. Uh, table of contents or no table of contents? Okay. Uh, that's three, four, yes, a bunch of people in favor of table of contents. Uh, cover letter. Um, it, to my way of thinking, an RFP, uh, when you respond to an RFP, you slap a one-page cover letter on the front that basically just says, we are honored to respond to your request, blah, 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 please find attached. Um, it, it, it doesn't, I would recommend against saying anything substantive in the cover letter, but somebody needs to decide, um, you know, who it says it's coming from, what letterhead it's on, so on and so forth. Um, Yes, that can come from the chair. Good. Chair can draft. Excellent. All right. Um, okay. Uh, whoever does the final edit, is that person empowered to remove duplicative text? So in going through 25 pages, you're going to find sentences that say the same thing as a sentence somewhere else. And in the way that we've been working, um, it's likely that those are getting inserted faster than they're getting taken out. Um, but an editor doing a final pass has the ability to clean that sort of thing up if they're empowered to do so. But everything that gets inserted was inserted by somebody for a reason, which means each sentence has a constituent who would, by default, uh, defend it. So uh, if you empower the editor to remove what appears to be duplicative text, the result will always piss somebody off, but it will be a shorter, clearer document. Thoughts on that? Ronnie? Um, well, I think um, while I'm, I'm comfortable with editorial changes by whoever holds the pen, I think it's important that whoever holds the pen is fully aware of all the discussions we've had on each every point um, so that that person can make an informed decision. Uh, so as long as whoever holds the pen has read all the doc all the mails on the mailing list and the and been present at the teleconference or uh, read the minutes, uh, then I'm comfortable and I'm not trying to be um, I'm not trying to be be difficult or anything. I, I just want to what I'm trying to say is that we've had so many discussions about a particular paragraph, the particular wordings, etc. So uh, it's important if we remove something, whether or not you find that that's duplicative, uh, that, that it's done uh, as an informed decision. So that's my, my difficult answer to your difficult question. Thanks. Um, so in principle, uh, I agree that that would be nice. Uh, but in practice, um, there's very little time and uh, it may be very difficult to track down through the many, many hundreds of emails uh, where it was that someone rationalized putting something someplace, and that person may not have been cognizant of the degree to which it was duplicative of things getting inserted in other places. Um, Alan, yeah, so Narani and Alan, I think... It, in an ideal world with plenty of time, yes, absolutely. Um, but 
yeah, I I think I think it may be safer as people seem to be saying that um, that the editor not try to do very much uh, in that regard. Um, okay, um, then Sorry, the no, next and related question is the editor charged with removing text that no longer has a clear meaning refers to things that are no longer present or is otherwise meaningless or unintelligible to a lay reader. Um, uh, Narani again. So to the previous point, uh, I, I guess, no. Well, I think if we trade carefully, like everyone said, then maybe, um, like said by Alan and John as well, um, I think we are safe. Uh, maybe, since I'm, I'm not sure if we made a decision about who, who, uh, who's holding the pen or if there are several uh, people holding the pen, but maybe I could just uh, suggest that if Bill makes changes, uh, maybe to consult with Michael just to see if there are any, uh, if they've been before making any uh, changes that are more than merely uh, editorial. Maybe that's a, a practical way of proceeding. Thanks. Um, Michael and I are not in the same place. Uh, he's in DC and I'm in San Francisco. Um, and I don't think we probably want to be on the phone together for eight hours while working through all this. Um, so, you know, whether whether it's Michael or me, <laughs> um, I I don't I don't care. And but you, you got to I, I don't think we can um, split the baby here. I think we have to decide one way or the other whether the person who holds the pen, and I believe it needs to be a single person, uh, is empowered to make those changes. And I am not, I am not speaking in favor of giving the person that power. I am speaking in favor of being clear about whether that has been done. Uh, Michael. Yes, thank you, Bill. Um, so one, I just wanted to say, I think that uh, with Bill's modifications on on making the document look cleaner. I think it was, it was excellent work and made it very, I guess, more digestible. But um, with regard to making the changes, and I know that Bill and I are in different time zones, as he said, and I know that, um, you know, we have quite a bit of work to do. I might suggest that um, since I'm in a little bit more reasonable time zone right now uh, with regard to, to making these edits, I think what I could do is try to incorporate all the changes that we've agreed to and discussed on this call and over the email list over the past day since uh, looking at the document. And then um, once I can put as much of that into a, a good format, uh, kind of pass off to Bill to take a look at and, and do a lot of his copy edit and cleanup changes um, to make it into a very good, uh, good document from that perspective. And then essentially have it uh, sent back to me, I can uh, work with Izumi and everything to make sure that we have it all in proper um, format and ready to go for release to the to the community. And, and we'll one for the team to agree on on the next call tomorrow morning, and then we can get that ready to go. And then if there's any last minute changes after the call tomorrow, um, I'm happy to incorporate that as well. With regard to the text changes, um, I think I just, I'll probably agree with much of what was said on this, um, that the with the, well, yes, Alan, with the uh, intermediate version, I'm imagining that there's going to be a uh, clean version and a red line. And so with the text changes, everybody will be clear as to what we've changed textually. Um, and with regards to anything that's duplicative or anything more than what has been agreed, I think the good process that we followed is that um, I will only make a draft uh, change or text change that has been specifically agreed to. But if there are any items that appear to be of an issue, um, I'll highlight those, and I think Bill can do the same. And then um, if, it's, if it's something that we can quickly change last minute before we release tomorrow, then we can do it that way. Um, I'd like to just uh, make a, a kind of generic point about red lines. Um, red lines 
are extraordinarily useful early in an editing process because they focus people's attention on the contentious points uh, and allow people to uh, ignore the the main body of a large document that's not changing. Uh, but they do focus people on the contentious points. And as you near the end of the process, what's needed is for people to take an overview of the entire document and not focus just on a few little windows that they have interest in, because that's how you miss all the duplicative stuff. That's how you miss um, uh, major inconsistencies between different parts of the document. Uh, and having people arguing over little things at the end of the process um, makes it very difficult to reach closure. So while I'm always happy to produce a red line, uh, at this stage of the process, I would really urge people to not uh, go too far down the rat hole of arguing over any one little thing that they happen to have a strong opinion about. And I would really urge people to try and take a step back and everybody do one big last pass through the document looking for inconsistencies and things that can be hammered into shape. Um, uh, let's see. Um, in terms of the, <coughs> the schedule, um, what I would suggest is, uh, Michael, perhaps you take the next three and a half hours, um, hand off to me at 10 a.m. my time, and then I hand back to you at, uh, say, 4 p.m. Uh, my time. So I take, you take three and a half hours, I take six hours, you take, um, you know, whatever feels reasonable after that up until the next call. Does that seem like a reasonable division with regards to the time I think I could make probably um, four and a half four and a half hours just because I have to go into the office and take care of a couple of things but um, I can I can make the changes I think between now and I guess within four hours it looks like okay so 1030 my time all right that works for me uh, and then let's see I believe Paul is next up. Go ahead. Thanks. Thanks very much. <clears throat> I'm I'm uh, I'm so happy that that you're both agreeing to to, to pull the, the pens here. I like the separation that you're doing. Uh, and Bill, I, I I know you've got to ask these very tough tough questions, and 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 they're good, and we need to get to the point and move on from this. All I want to say to you is that I think we know each other very well here. And I do trust you. I trust everybody that's on this call. But Bill, I think you also need to realize that for the, I would rather have the NTIA say, look at these idiots doubled up than for you to put anybody's nose out of joint on this call. Because I think everybody's put in a lot, a lot of work here. And I know that you've got a great uh, skill at doing what you will do here. But what I'm saying is I'm giving you my vote. But what I'm saying is, Bill, be careful with that. Because... I'm trusting that you're not going to just say, oh, I'm throwing this out, when you know there could have been a discussion on it. I'd rather leave it in and let the NTIA said those idiots are stupid because they doubled up on something. That's a much better way of doing this, Bill, and I think you understand that. So I'm giving you my vote, and I'm confident that, you, that you'll do something very nice because I did see what, what you wrote there, and you're certainly skilled at this. But, you know, we need to, we need to, we're working together. We're a team here, right? So I can work with the speed you're giving me, and... Even if it's not a very long time, I will take one lovely look at this with a nice cup of tea. Um, and I, I agree that you and Michael should be comfortable with the time you have uh, to produce this. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I, I, um, the path that you are suggesting is certainly the safer one. And I think for a document of this sort, um, if, if this were a commercial situation and we were responding to an RFP where we, we really wanted to get somebody's business uh, and we were in competition, it would really matter how clear the document was and how nicely it was presented and so forth. Um, in our situation, it seems 
much more important that we not be second guessed after the fact by someone who says that, you know, the thing that they really cared about got axed out at the last moment with no discussion. So copywriting yeah. is brilliant, Phil, but harmony is also very important. And I think that's something we need to show to everyone out there as well. And I think we're good at this, so let's just stick with that. Yeah. All right. Um Craig. So, um, I would prefer to see a red line version. I understand what you are saying, um, but it's a very big document and we've been staring at it for a very long time and it makes it a lot easier to track what Michael has done and what you have done um, for us to do, to just be comfortable about the changes that you're making. Um, we can always turn it off and, and I will intend to turn off the red line to read it clearly, cleanly um, from start to end, but um, it would help a lot if the red lining is on just to know what changes have been made to it. Okay, uh, Narani? Yeah, thank you, Paul and Craig. I think I want to support those comments and and, and just add that uh, there is a lot of hard work. It's been a very, very difficult. It's been fun. It's been constructive. And I really enjoyed working with all of you. But it's been a lot of work producing this document. And Izumi has done a fantastic job trying to navigate all the input we've had, all the discussions we've had on this list, uh, the input we've had on the global list. Uh, this is not going to be the the most beautifully written document uh, produced. Uh, that and given the short amount of, of time we've had to produce this, this is not. Unfortunately, this is not um, uh, the main objective. Uh, we. It is really really important that we uh, show that in this document that we've listened to the community. So, and I guess that's why I was cautioning, cautioning against to, um, uh, about being careful about copy editing. Uh, there might be wording in there that we don't think is fantastic, but it might be there because uh, this has been raised as input from the community with support and we have found a way of accommodating uh, that input. Um, so, uh, again, like Paul said, I, I trust you at your copy editing, um, so there's no concern uh, about that. Um, but I think it's important that we see the changes and that because it helps us all keep track of where we are. Um, and even if it means that we focus on little details, I think we're all sort of competent enough to have a look at the clean version and see if the document makes sense and if it's internally consistent. We have read this document so many times now, so we're very well familiar with it. Um, so thanks, Paul and Craig, uh, and how how you divide the work up between yourselves. Uh, I'll let you decide, and I'm very grateful that uh, people are willing to step in uh, at this time uh, to do uh, to do good work. So thanks. Okay, let me let me just try and get sort of a, a sense of the room here. Let's say that we have a spectrum from one to 10, where one is we make no changes whatsoever um, that are not purely um, sort of editorial. And, and sorry, honey, go back to, go back to bed. All right. You're alive. Sorry. I think your daughter will give you many words of wisdom, Bill. <laughs> well, if it makes you feel any better, I've had my baby speak on a uh, internet governance forum remotely. So. Um, okay. So one, one to ten. One is no editor. <laughs> Saw you on the bed. <laughs> okay, one to ten. One is uh, no editorial uh, distinction, uh, judgment being exercised. Ten is editor runs roughshod over everything. So probably we're somewhere between like four and six or something. But um, please, everybody, give me your number so that we have a, a sense. Bad guys don't saw your back.
Okay. All right, good. Um, so we're being a little more conservative than not. Um, that's great. Uh, I think Michael and I can both work with that. And uh, I'm going to mute again. Uh, somebody else. Somebody else to take over. Daddy, what is that? That's my computer. Indeed. So, um, yes, good informed decision, and uh, good that um, Bill has clearly um, asked us um, on our comf you know, what level that we're, we're comfortable with. So, um, I'm not sure if Bill has any additional um, points that he wanted to ask, but, um, oh, well, no, okay. And uh, I, I do confirm that, um, I, I do see that you were able to listen. So I will carry on, and um, thank you very much, Bill, for uh, raising all the questions and making things clear so that uh, you know what to do for the editing and you know our expectations. So that was helpful. Thank you, Bill. And um, uh, then uh, let's go on to um, confirm timeline. And I sent the search out of the timeline. Um, and thank you for showing this. <coughs> and um, Alan has um, has um, raised a point on which points that we um, incorporate uh, those uh, suggestions. And I think we've covered this uh, mainly. Um, thank you, um, Alan. I really like this um, diagram, by the way. And um, but I want to double check at which stage we do what and whether there's um, any need to. Or change in the timeline at, um, that I've listed here, especially on um, what time that worked for um, Michael and Bill. So um, I think we've, we're done with um, um, one. Oh, actually, I think there is one point that we want to cover, which is on um, fixing inconsistency in IPR. And I think there was general agreement that we want to, um, to um, improve our text and um, I think we, we still don't have an agreed text yet. So um, I'd like to confirm um, who, who is able to volunteer. And uh, yes, exactly, Alan. So somebody needs to draft the text. Um, um, I'd like to confirm who, who is able to volunteer to work on this. And, um, and I'd like to confirm timeline for this. Um, So um, yes, um, Alan, um, you you have volunteer, but not a lawyer. Yes. Um, so maybe um, if is there anybody else who can actually vol uh, volunteer to collaborate with um, Alan? Well, actually, maybe Alan, if you can, you if you can volunteer, you can drop, and then people can feedback. We have lawyers on the list. So um, thank you, Alan. So thank you very much, Alan. So um, when do you think you will be able to work on this? Or how much time do you need? Uh, two or three hours from now, or does it not take too long? Uh, yes, I think I can do it in, in three hours from now. Um, I'm not going to get started immediately. I have some other things to do. No, uh, thank you, Alan. So um, three hours from now, um, this, this part will be ready. So taking that part into account, um, I'm suggesting that uh, we confirm um, to fix um, the text suggestion at uh, 15 UTC, which is actually uh, almost that time. Um, but I think um, we, we have uh, already agreed on all the text um, suggestions that we've, we've covered um, in the course, I think we're good, unless anybody feels that we have to extend this time for another hour or so after the call. Um, so I see a comment from Bill. Is the question at hand who, who summarized the edits to be applied to know? Oh, well, there's actually one part, one section that's related to, well, two sections 
related to IPR, and um, there was a, uh, a comment from the global list that what's described there is inconsistent, and we should make our description to be consistent. Yeah, and Alan has um, agreed to, to work on this improvement uh, to make sure that our description is consistent in uh, both of these parts. So um, I'm not see seeing any hand or comment related to closing and uh, well, com com confirmation on the suggested uh, text. Uh, yes, Michael does uh, keep track of um, all the all the text um, being suggested, and I will make sure to. Uh, let Michael and well, actually, I will share with the whole list when once I confirm that there's consensus for this. Um, so so <clears throat> we we will make sure that we will only incorporate once everybody is happy with this part of the text as well, so that it's no surprise for anybody. So um, so I think we've covered one and uh, two, uh, step two. So um. Michael to share the update version or proposal version of 3.1, um, which is to incorporate feedback. Well, my initial plan was to incorporate feedback on the proposal, um, <coughs> um, or all the comments for the earlier version, um, which was version 3.0, uh, shared after the last call, and then reflect text suggestions confirmed in step two. Um, and then the timeline for this is um, UTC 19, which um, we may not have time to um, to incorporate um, Alan's uh, uh, confirm everybody's agreement on Alan's text actually. So um, <coughs> um. I would like to confirm uh, how people feel about um, how we incorporate um, uh, Alan's uh, text suggestion to come. So um, one approach is that um, Alan says that he can have it ready in three hours' time, which will be before UTC 19. So we tentatively reflect this in the version um, 3.1 to be released. Um, and then uh, people can confirm um, whether you are comfortable with um, with what's being incorporated, including um, Alan's suggestion. Another approach is uh, approach um, this this the first approach is approach A, and the second um, alternative approach is that um, we give additional time for people to um, to give feedback on Alan's text, and then. Um, so we don't incorporate Alan's text uh, for version 3.1, and then once we confirm our um, agreement within Christine about Alan's text, then uh, we, we incorporate uh, this uh, in the future draft. Um, which approach works better for you? Yes, I agree with with Paul. Oh, we need to move fast. So my preference is that let's just incorporate Alan's text um, in version 3.1, and then people can certainly take a look at this, uh, including with other parts. So I think it would be better to go, go with option A: incorporate Alan's text in version 3.1. Oh, Alan, thank you for saying that you can be quicker than three hours. Excellent. So let's do this and. Um, Yes, exactly. So, um, and then I'd like to confirm that um, with Michael and Bill. So th this was my initial plan, right? And then perhaps um, later incorporate uh, Bill's suggestion at a later stage, so that everybody is clear that what's being incorporated um, is reflected based on what we have clearly discussed and agreed. Um, but I wasn't sure if um, you and uh, Bill felt that it's better to incorporate Bill's suggestion as well um, at this stage, or people feel uh, uh, like this as well. 
Sure, yes, I agree with Alan. We would like to confirm um, um, before tomorrow's call on um, Alan and build the text. Um, so um, this should be in incorporated in our timeline to incorporate the build's uh, uh, edit suggestion before tomorrow's call. But um, uh, I see a hand from Michael. Izumi, I just wanted to be clear. Are you asking if there would be a version circulated with the group before Bill does his work on the um, on the you know making it look good and cleaning it up and and all the formatting and everything, or did, were you asking if the alternative is that we just do it all at once and then um, Bill and I can work on it, we'll circulate it to the team, and then that would be the the draft to be discussed and hopefully approved at tomorrow's call. I just wanted to ask about clarity on that one. Uh, yes, so I'm, I'm uh, giving two options uh, as you, you listed, and um, and um, so uh, as you can see from the timeline, um, um, the the comments from um, to inc to be incorporated on um, the the updated proposal is um, is in step five, which is version three point two UTC five. So I was wondering that um, if those uh, uh, comments can be incorporated at this stage so that people can be clear um, what we have agreed um, is incorporated in stage three and um, we can uh, confirm at a separate stage what uh, Bill has added in stage number five or we just incorporate everything in uh, stage number three, um, including uh, Bill's uh, edit. So that's what I would like to ask for comments from um, from the Chris team. So to repeat my question, whether to include include a bill's uh, suggested edit in step three or step five, both are actually is before tomorrow's call. So keep it simple. Um, I see um, Paul. So I, I, I think Paul is in favor of incorporating um, um, edits from, from um, Bill at one, on one, one stage and not separate the edits. So I see a hand from Michael. Yes, I think we have a very aggressive timeline that we're trying to meet. And, um, and it looks like a lot of the comments uh, we've, we've reached agreement on and everything. So might I suggest um, because I know Bill and I have quite a bit to do in, in a short amount of time. Um, as I prepare the, my first version here that will be in the next few hours and, and incorporating Alan's text, um, I was going to email that to Bill and then for him to kind of you know, to pass off and he can work on it. If you'd like, I can, um, I can go ahead and copy the entire uh, CRISP team on that email so that that version with, with the red lines um, you all can take a look at and see if there's any issue there, but I agree that I wouldn't want Bill to have to wait for any other feedback because I'm assuming that at that point that uh, that um, version won't have any kind of controversial issue or anything like that, and um, and then we can get to Bill's uh, Bill's document after that fact too. Agreed, and that makes sense. So um, I I let's uh, move on based on that, and uh, I see a hand from Bill. Uh, I just wanted to say, you know, if people have suggestions or comments or things that they'd like to, that, that aren't controversial, that they'd like to make sure get taken care of, by all means, mail Michael, mail me, um, so that we can, it, we don't want anything to fall through the cracks, right? And so more eyes on the work product is good, um, but we got to, have a sense of whether what what would justify actually sort of calling a halt and you know going back to an earlier version or or waiting until there's you know consensus on mailing list or something right there there's a difference between um, input that helps make sure that we don't miss anything which is really helpful and somebody saying, hey, we got to stop. And that's what I'm worried about. Sure, Bill. Um, I think um, uh, um, I understand and agree with your point. And I think um, everybody agrees that uh, let's not separate a set. So
So um, then what I'd like to confirm with Michael and Bill is whether this uh, timeline that I set, uh, not assuming that um, Bill uh, will work um, after Michael's edit, um, it, um, is sufficient for you. I'm assuming that you, you probably need more time than this. So um, shall we, how much time um, do you think you need um, in terms of UTC? So now it says UTC uh, 19, but, um, oh, sorry, Nurani, I see your hand. So before I confirm this, um, I, let's go to Nurani. Thank you. Uh, thank, thanks a lot for offering uh, that solution, Michael. I think that makes sense. I, I understand Bill's uh, concern as well. I mean, the way I see it, uh, Michael incorporates all the changes. Hopefully, there's nothing uh, surprising in that. He sends that on to Bill, seeing us, so we can read through it. There shouldn't be anything surprising coming out of uh, Bill's edit uh, either. If, for some reason, something big pops up, I guess we will simply deal with that after Bill has submitted version, sorry, sorry, the version, I guess, 3.1. I'm a bit lost in the versions, but uh, according to Bill's deadline, there's still a little bit of time then. If there's something we really need to discuss, then we'll discuss it then. Uh, but I can't really see uh, someone popping up in the middle of the night halting the whole process. It's, it's not a uh, particularly uh, reasonable approach. So um, I think that would be a way of handling it if something major pops up, which I really can't see happening. Thanks. No, thanks, Anurani. So I, I'm assuming that you, you agree with this direction. So we just uh, we just uh, go on and uh, incorporate those um, um, edits in step three, and then we can just check uh, whatever in the um, future step. So um, let's go to Alan. Uh, thank you, Izumi. I, I'm sorry to to do things out of order. I have something that we should have discussed under agenda item three, and uh, I made a proposal a few days ago about changing the title of the document to say a response from the RIR community much earlier. In, in, so currently it says draft response to the Internet Coordination Group RFP on IANA from the RR community. I propose to move from the RR community to the beginning, and I'd, I'd now suggest to make it from the Internet Numbers community. And I also suggested to put a, a sort of an abstract near the beginning saying what this proposal is all about. Um, and the, there's a a matrix that the Secretariat's been adding to the versions that they publish on the website, I think we should also add that to the document. So uh, I'd just like confirmation on what people think about these ideas. Good point, Alan. And does anybody have a comment to Alan's uh, idea? Yes to Alan from Bill. I, I think it's a good idea. Yeah. So, um, and Bill has to be clear that um, Alan, um, <laughs> Bill has liked both of Alan's points. Yeah. Yes. Um, I think it's it's fine with everybody, uh, with Paul and Bill, and I'm not seeing any other. Hands or comments. So, um, unless I I see somebody uh, commenting to express concern, I think we can say um, we are good with your suggestion. And um, just to be clear, um, can you later um, uh, let, let me know which which particular um, one that um, you mentioned? Maybe privately to me is fine, so that I can keep track of um, the exact uh, changes. Um, uh, um, <laughs> and I see a suggestion from um, uh, Bill to um, to have UTC zero, uh, which I believe would be fifteenth of January um, for step three. So um, and then I think um. 
I, I initially uh, wanted to give um, something like uh, um, six, seven hours for first team members to take a look. So um, maybe we give until UTC 6, or uh, oh no, yeah, UTC 6, or for people to be able to give a comment in step 4. Sure. So, um, so step three, you, um, so you mentioned that you can uh, send out the, um, the suggested text um, by UTC zero on 15th of January. So, step three, I'll just uh, type. Oh, thank you, Michael. That's so helpful that you will type at least. And then, um, if somebody can continue to type for step four, um, we will set the deadline as um, UTC 6, 15th of January. And then, um, Michael, to give um, the updated version, incorporating feedback um, as um, UTC, UTC 10 a.m., 15th of January. Would that work for everybody? I mean, since that step four is coming from Christine um, for um, for the version that will be sent um, under a work from you, Bill and Michael. But um, we, we do have a little bit of buffer time um, since we, we, sh uh, we shrink um, the timeline. So uh, before, the, um, before the next call uh, tomorrow, so it, it is possible to extend time for these things a little bit more if people feel the need. So um, just to be very clear to everybody, the, the, the deadline for comments from Christine will be um, UTC 6, uh, 15th of January. And you will have roughly six hours to see the, the draft that will be, um, be out um, uh, based on work from uh, Michael and Bill. Is that okay with everybody? Okay, so that seems to be working for Alan and Bill. And um, so, if people have concerns um, regarding your time zone or not having sufficient time, uh, please express it. If I don't hear any comments or concerns, um, yes, 6 a.m. UTC or 15th of January. Okay. So I'm not hearing any other um, comments. So let's fix the deadline of comments at UTC 6, uh, 15th of January. And um, Bill will, uh, and then um, let me also check. We will send out the, um, the, the version for step three. Would it be Michael or Bill? I think that the Christine members doesn't have strong or, or preference. Or so who has the pen at the last minute change? Uh, I guess so if we're talking about step three, that will be at the point of UTC zero. Okay, so let me be um, clear about time. At UTC 6? Excuse me, I think the question was that um, when Bill sends his version out, should he just go ahead and, and post that to the list at 0 UTC? And then once the comment period at 6 o'clock UTC has been completed or we've closed that time, then who would have oh, the final? Um, Thank you. Final 
exactly. Thank you for the clarification, Michael. Yeah, uh, understood. And and thank you, um, Bill, for raising this question. Um, so, I, and Michael has said that um, he can incorporate any last minute changes at that point. So, I would assume um, Michael will be holding the pen at that point um, of step number five. So, um, would it be Yes, I agree. That's what I was going to suggest, Alan. Thank you. So at step number three, um, I think it's more efficient for Bill to send out the um the version um to the list at step number three at ETC zero, fifteenth of January. And then once we receive comments from Chris team members at step number four, um Michael will be the one to, to hold the pen for step number five, and then I'll share the updated version. Okay. It seems that um, nobody is making any comments, so, and then we, we've taken up a lot of our time already, and we want to start focusing on the actual work. So I'll send out the actual time on the, uh, on the email um, deadline for each point. Um, and um, with the updated time. And um, thank you very much again, uh, Bill and Michael, to have agreed on, 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 uh, on the editing of the proposal and Alan for uh, agreeing on the text of the IPR. Noted, Alan. So um, let's go back to the agenda. And then I think we've, we've covered everything, and the only one that's left is uh, the next meeting, which we will have uh, tomorrow on the 15th of January, um, UTC 13. So this will be the last meeting that, meeting that we will have before um, we submit the, uh, the proposal to the ITG. It's very important that we clear as much uh, issues as possible online, which I believe is clear to everybody. So um, I think we, we had a very um, constructive meeting, although it was a little bit long. Uh, so um, does anybody have any other issues that we would like to cover? I'm not seeing any hands. So um, thank you very much for joining the call and um, staying with us for such long hours, especially the observers and, and our secretariat. So um, thank you all, and uh, we'll keep in touch online. Thanks.